core values and the culture of the business and the vision of the business, I'm realizing the longer that I coach that that is a very important area in order to build a team around you that are excited. And also for an owner that has reached a certain level of success, for them to continue to be excited oh, yeah. and wanting to grow and not getting lethargic and not kind of backsliding to a lesser form of, of what they were a few years ago. Today's guest is a friend of mine. We've actually talked on each other's podcasts multiple times, and I'm so excited to have him back now. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects when it comes to attracting and hiring the right people, but he's actually got a different take on how important it is to have a solid vision in your company. What kind of business do you want to create, and how do you get the questions answered that you need to answer in order to be able to do this well? want to welcome today's guest, Kyle Hunt with Remodelers on the Rise, as we dig into vision and how you can get everything that you've ever wanted out of your business. Well, hey, Kyle, welcome to the show again. Thank you for having me, Ryan. We're going to talk about something that's incredibly important, but for some people, that's this pie in the sky, nebulous, strategic thing that we all talk about at a weekend leadership seminar, Mm. but we get back to the office and Nobody knows what to do with it. And that's goals and vision. Especially that vision thing. Vision, yeah. So how do you define vision? Hmm, kind of your business vision, your business vision. Well, I've been, I've been grappling with this here and I've been in business for about 15 years. And uh-huh. I would say this topic over the years has not been something that's come super easy or natural for me. If you told me, hey, Kyle, what are you going to do in the next 12 months? I could, I could be pretty clear with that. Sure. Hey, Kyle, where are you trying to take this business? Where do you want it to be 10 years from now, 15 years mm. from now? What are you trying to build here? Then it gets real fuzzy. And I found mm. as I work with, I primarily work with home remodelers, kitchens, baths, additions, uh, guys and gals that are doing that type of work. As I work with my clients over the years of, hey, let's start with the end in mind. Let's start let's start down the road. Where, where do you want to take this thing? Just a lot of people scratch their heads at that. And I think it's because Mm. when we try to kind of dream that or get a clear vision on that, it becomes murky. Your question of how do I define it? Where are you going in your business? Where are you trying to take this thing? What does the next, a couple chapters down in this book, what does this look like? Does it look very similar to what you have today? Does it look very different than what you have today? Describe that to me. And the clearer, what I found is the clearer that we can get with a a little bit longer term horizon, a little bit longer term vision, we could call that three years, we could call that five years, we could call that 10 or more years. But the clearer we are with what the vision is and what we're trying to build, the easier it is to get there and the easier it is to kind of reverse engineer it back and say, okay, if that's where I'm heading, what do I need to do in the next quarter? comes easier to tackle that. It reminds me of a, a leadership training I was at one time where they said, you know, if you're hiking a giant mountain range, it's easier to keep your eyes focused on the peak of the mountain because then all the valleys and boulders and everything that you have to hike over to get to the peak become inconsequential. Like you don't really mm. see them, you don't feel them because you're focused on the peak of the mountain. You get to skip over all that little stuff. You just keep going. Yeah, changes your perspective on it. So why is it that people don't do this? I think if they're anything like a lot of the business owners I've met, and perhaps they're listening to this, we're moving pretty quick. Mm. We got got things to do. I got an inbox of stuff. I've got things to do this week. I've got sales calls. I got estimates to do. It's probably a little bit of the classic, we're too busy in the business to focus Mm. on the on the business. And I also think it's one thing to take one step back, take a breath and think about where you where you are and what on the business thing you need. It's another thing to take 20 steps back and go, no, step way, way, way back here. Yeah. What what are you doing? What what is this business about? Is it serving your life? Is it not serving your life? Where are you taking this thing? That requires a whole nother level of kind of disconnect from the day in and day out. And I think we don't know where to go with that. It gets a little pie in the sky. It gets a little vague. And that's where I've got some questions that I'll share here coming up. 
I bet you you're going to ask me about it. <laughs> that makes it a little bit more, I guess, easier to walk step by step through it to get clear on the vision. Probably four or five years ago, I was just starting to coach on this recruiting and how to hire and attract the best people. And I remember someone, I was like, so where, where are you going with your company? Because what you're talking about with vision, I mean, it is, has the single greatest impact in your ability to attract the right people to your business mm -hmm. is being really clear on your vision because they yeah. want to know where you're going. And I remember asking, I was like, so where are you going in say the next three years? And he just cuts me off. And he says, Ryan, I don't know if I'm gonna make payroll on Friday. Because mm -hmm. the last thing I'm going to do is think about where we're going in three years when I don't know how I'm going to make payroll. Like I need to focus on that. And what I'm hearing you say is when you start focusing on those bigger long-term things, you step back. Now, maybe all of a sudden payroll doesn't become as big an issue. Uh, yes, there's stuff in there. And what you said before of the hiring of folks. Yes, if you have, if you're trying to attract and retain A players, you better show them where you're heading. You better let them know how they're going to continue to grow in their work and in their job and in their career with you. And if you're just kind of trying to survive month by month and you haven't cast any of that vision, the C players will hang around. They don't mind it. But those A players, they're going to try to find somewhere else that they can thrive. So how do they get to take that 20 steps back and actually take a look at the business? Yeah. Like we made the promise at the beginning, practical, tactical, how to do this. Yes. So let's dig into that. I'm all about the practical, tactical. So this is actually something that I walked my Remodelers VIP club through last year. And when we were talking about what topics should we do, I said, this one, this one went over well and was very helpful. So if you go into the show notes of uh, this episode, you're going to see a little link to a business vision planning worksheet. Everybody loves a worksheet, simple one, practical one, business yeah. vision planning worksheet. I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the things that, that are in there. And it kind of starts with three questions, kind of unrelated to looking out front and where we're going, but a little bit of kind of where are we at and what does the rear view mirror look like? So mm -hmm. the, way I, the way I start this is, number one, how many active years do you have left? This is a really weird question for a lot of folks. Yeah. How many more years would you estimate you're going to be actively involved in your business. If you ask me without me thinking about it, I'd be like, I don't know, 30 years? Well, time out. 30 years from I'm going to be 70 years old. Mm. Is that my goal? I started thinking about it. I go, well, maybe my goal is about 20 years when I turn 60 or so. That just made my mind a flutter of going, huh. So I've been in business for 15 going on 16. You, you multiply that by two and add a couple of years. That's my career. Holy cow. That just made me think differently. And if you're if you're fifty if you're in your fifties right now and you say, How many more years would you estimate you're gonna be actively involved in your business? We might be in that eight, 10, 12, 14 year type thing. So when we're thinking about business vision, that's the first thing that might slow us down a little bit of going, How many active years left? Okay, let's think about that. Cool. As of right now, how well is your business supporting the life that you're desiring to lead? How well is this business supporting the life? Not, not the other way around, but how is your business supporting the life you're desiring to lead? Is it providing you enough time, money, energy and excitement, balance, whatever that looks like for you? And I want you to think about that and write out some honest thoughts. How long do we have left? How is this business supporting us right so, now? So let me ask a question on that. Yes. Because I know there's some people listening right now, and I just, I want to hear how you help connect the dots. So we're talking about a company's vision, where the company is going, yep. but you just said, is it supporting the life that I want to have? Mm -hmm. So this is becoming personal now. Yeah. Help, help me connect those dots. Good, interesting point. This business vision planning worksheet, which you can find in the show notes, is very focused. I was talking to business owners in this. So when I start to think about my business vision, when Ryan, you start thinking about your business vision, it kind of starts with, hey, you're the founder of this sucker. This is your circus. Mm -hmm. There's a phrase that I heard recently. <laughs> my, wife, my wife used it. She's like, not my circus, not my monkeys. I never heard it before. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, let, let them do that. This is your circus you built. And this is your team around you. And you are the leader of this thing. Yeah, you might have some leaders around you. This is a good thing for them to also participate in. But yeah, this is, this is your business. And if you're going to cast a vision for it, it's starting here around, you know, how is this doing for you? It's cute to cast a big business vision. Then when I ask you, how well is your business doing right now as far as providing time and money and energy, excitement and balance? And you're like, it's, it's, I'm flailing, man. I'm overwhelmed. Mm. I'm stressed, et cetera. 
Yeah. Um, I kind of want to know that if I'm working with you on, on your business vision. So there's, there's kind of maybe that thought to that thought. Yeah. So we've got this figured out. We, we kind of know where we're at a little bit. We know what is the, is the business actually providing the lifestyle? Then where do we go from there? Before we kind of dive into thinking long term, let's look at the rearview mirror a little bit. What tangible progress have you made in the last three to five years towards your business thriving and being what you're aiming it to be? How has it been? Before we kind of talk about what's coming up, we do not usually slow down enough to recognize the progress that we have already made. And that can be a very encouraging thing. I think we underappreciate how much we have done and improved and implemented. A lot of times we're sitting here lamenting about how we don't have this done or that done. But if we rewind the clock four years and we said, hey, four years ago, this is where you were. This is where you are today. You'd be pretty stinking happy and proud of yourself, wouldn't you? Yeah. You have worked very hard and your team has worked very hard. And look at what you, kind of the pieces you've put into place and the things you've corrected and the things you've been able to do. We need to make sure that we acknowledge that. And oftentimes what I see is we kind of kind of just set that off to the side. So that's kind of the basis before we get into, all right, so there, there's where you're at. This is, this is kind of how, how things are feeling right now. Look at the progress you've made now. Let's answer some questions with a little bit longer term vision in mind. And it kind of gets into the next section of this. You want me to rattle through them a little bit? Well, I don't want you to give the whole worksheet away. I want people to go download it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but it's very, but they can listen to this and get super excited about yeah. it. Yeah. No, I'm getting excited about it. Here's one thing I would love to know. So we've got this figured out and I know that we're, we're going to start talking about how we're moving forward. Help me understand why I would want to do this. Like what's the value in it? I get, I get the value for me. It's, it's, it's sort of like, well, is the business going to be able to provide for the number of active years I have left? Like I can connect those dots pretty quick, Sure, but there's so much more to vision than just that. Yep. I mean, this has value to your people. This has value to your customers. This has value to everybody else. Uncrack that for me for just a second before we jump into the next section of questions. Yeah. And I guess in fairness, we have been a little... Maybe Stop turning away work, burning out your team, and working so hard. Learn about the proven process that businesses everywhere are using to save time, save money, and hire all the people they need. We'll train your team to implement and run this process in-house so you can grow as fast as you want. Book a call with our team at corematters.com owner focused on the first three. The vision, as we, as we get into it, we start talking about a little bit more around the team, number of employees, what are they doing? We start talking about the company culture. Vision and culture, a lot of times, those buzzwords kind of connect quite often of describing what are we trying to build as far as the culture of the business. So as far as connecting those dots, rephr rephrase your question for me so I can answer it very specifically. Yeah, I mean, so there's the benefit or the value of creating a vision for me as the entrepreneur. Yep. Like it keeps me focused. It, I think back to that mountaintop analogy, right? It keeps me focused on the top of the mountain so I know where I'm going. But you've probably heard the phrase, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others, mm -hmm. right? So I'm building a business, not a job. I'm building a business, right? Yep. So I'm bringing people alongside me. I'm, I'm growing this organization with people that have the right skills and talents to really help me accomplish this vision. How do we build this for them? Or why are they going to care about this vision? Yeah. Interesting. Last night, I was at the little pool party for a little fi five-year-old friend of ours and our kids were playing. And he's working for a, actually a flooring company. And he's an employee of the flooring company, decent, decent sized deal. And he was talking to me about how the two owners of the company, I think he used the phrase vision. They've got a big vision. Mm. They, they want to grow. They're putting the pieces together. And here is an employee of the company for, he's been with them six, seven years, talking very excitedly about the vision of the company that he's working for. So that, that's a good example of what you're talking about wow. there is the team that works for you excited about where you're going. Yeah. Why do they care? See growth potential for them. A business that they are proud to be a part of and that they're honored to be a part of and that are excited to be a part of, where they see growth in the, the benefits that it could offer them, the money that they could make. Compare that to a business, let's say the same flooring, flooring guy, shout out to Matt, by the way, in case he's listening to this. Let's say it's a flooring sales guy for another company they never talk about vision. They never remind people of what they're trying to accomplish. They're, they're not talking about where they are today and where they're wanting to go in the future. Everything's just about how we do on that job. What about this sale? 
how's your sales quarter going? Ooh. It's just that has a totally different feel between those two things. So, I mean, this is an area that I have grown in over the years where core values and the culture of the business and the vision of the business, I'm realizing the longer that I coach that that is a very important area in order to build a team around you that are excited. And also for an owner that has reached a certain level of success, for them to continue to be excited oh, yeah. and wanting to grow and not getting lethargic and not kind of backsliding to a lesser form of, of what they were a few years ago. You were talking about that earlier, how entrepreneurs tend to not celebrate the wins. I mean, it's like the curse of the mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Yeah. It's like you doubled the business last year. Yeah, but my goal was to triple it. So I failed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? But I think they do the same thing. Like you were just talking about, they hit that certain level, that, that threshold that supports that lifestyle and they become complacent. It, it's not fun anymore. It's not exciting yeah. anymore. It's not the quick wins. I remember someone telling me that they were a serial entrepreneur. I think they were like on business number 11 or something. And they said the, the zero to like 2 million is their favorite time. But after 2 million, they're like, it's boring. And they want out. That's a real thing. It is, it is. But I think part of that is they don't have that long-term vision either. Yeah. All right. So, so what do we do now? So we've looked behind us. We've kind of established where we've at, how far we've come. What's next? So with some specific questions that can kind of help talking about you as the business owner, when you think a little bit longer term, what is different about the work that you personally are doing in the business? For a lot of my clients who still have several hats that they're wearing in the business, this is a very important thing to consider long term. Do you still want to be the primary salesperson or estimator? Do you want to be involved on the production side of the business? Write out some things that you're doing maybe more of or some things that you're doing less of. So that helps get that going. Your team, dream a little bit. Approximately how many employees do you have longer term? Let's say three years or five years. You decide what long term means for you. And what are some of the new positions you've added to the business? I think that's a very important one. Show me your future org chart and how it compares differently to now. And all of a sudden, if you dream about that a little bit, man, it would be nice to have somebody dedicated to estimating. It'd be really nice to have an in-house designer to walk through all of the selections and really walk our clients through the design development process. If you dream that a little bit, and all of a sudden this org chart's got five additional team members on there compared to where you are now, that to me is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, we've got a little bit of a vision of what this could look like. Wow. So really accepting the fact that the business could look different. It doesn't have to be this linear trajectory where mm -hmm. it's, I keep doing the same thing I'm doing, but more of it. It's, yeah. let's look at what this really could look like. And I imagine that part of this goes into that lifestyle that the entrepreneur yes. wants to create as well is we use some of the EOS tools. You're familiar with EOS, yep. right? Yep. Delegate and elevate. Love that yep. exercise. But it's like, what do you as the entrepreneur, what are you really good at? Or what are you great at and what do you love doing? And then just build a business around those things. And that, that's really what you're talking about. Yes. And some people, it's super interesting. There's some people, I'm thinking of one of my clients, Brett. He is ambitious. Mm -hmm. He has a huge vision. I have other clients, thinking of Bill, I'm not using last names, who aren't that ambitious. They're like, you know what? When I think five years from now, I see little tweaks. I'm pretty pleased with where we're at. I feel like we're in a good sweet spot. I could see maybe adding this, maybe adding that, but not a big difference between now and five years from now. So it, there's, there's ambition here. I'm thinking about it in my, in my own business. I've been at this for 15 years. I'm pretty happy with what I've built. I think I'm in a bit of a sweet spot. I got a full-time employee. I got another employee. And then a couple months ago, a gentleman reaches out to me, which happens so often and says, I want to get into coaching. I'm a successful remodeling company. I've built this and I can see wanting for the next 10 or 15 years to kind of manage the parts of my business that I still want and desire to manage, but I want to help others. You're a business coach. I thought it might be good to tag team up or maybe you need some help. I have put off the vision of having other coaches around me and I've been pretty pleased with what I've built, yet the amount of leads and the amount of one-on-one -on -one coaching requests are greater than what my capacity is. So I'm sitting up here thinking, talking about vision, but also very actively talking about vision in my own business. Where do I see this in 10 years? Am I pleased with how the business is working for my family and for myself and for my, my team? Does it need to look much differently? I like an elf business. Elf, easy, lucrative, and fun. I like an elf business. And I've got 
a bit of an elf business that I've worked very hard. It wasn't an elf business before. Do I want to mess with that? So I asked my wife, who's very knowledgeable about it. I asked my mastermind guys. And you know what all of them are saying, Ryan? Hmm. I don't know. What do you want, Kyle? <laughs> what? You're supposed to give me the answer. No, I'm the business owner. I've built this thing. I'm can't, I, I've got a lot of perspective on on business growth, et cetera. What do I want this to turn into? Mm. This is what we're talking about for everybody listening. What do you want this to turn into? What do you want this to look like? Casting a vision, even though that feels a little pie in the sky, it feels a little ambiguous. Do the work, go through this worksheet, do the work to get clear on what a vision could look like. And then let's work backwards and let's get clear on why that would be important to you. And time spent thinking strategically and working strategically on this topic is time very, very well spent. Yeah. It just reminds me of that saying, you know, if, if you fail to plan, plan to fail. Yeah. And this is really making sure that you are focused on a destination. You don't deviate from it and you build the business to support the vision, not the other way around, like create a vision yeah. that your business can support. <laughs> Yes, that's probably going to disappoint you a hundred times out of a hundred. Just being really clear on where you're going. And I love this too, because when you think 10 years down the road, not only do you have to consider the fact that the industry might change, there's going to be political shifts, there's going to be economic shifts, there might be regulatory shifts. There's all these things that are going to happen inside of 10 years. But if you keep your eye focused on what you want to accomplish and the business you want to build, it's probably make it a lot easier to get through all of those swings and everything else. You're not reactive anymore. You're now proactive yes. in being able to build this business that you've always wanted. Yeah. Smart, successful business owners spend time thinking about their vision, adjusting, making adjustments on that, and also working backwards from there. And a couple other things. I've got clients that have built out their team and their business, and they work 20 hours a week. Mm. I don't want to work 20 hours a week right now. I'm, I'm in the prime of my career. I love what I do. I have no interest in working 20 hours a week. But do I want to go from 45, 50 hours down to 35, 40? Hmm, that's interesting to me. That would leave some more time for golf, right? That would go. leave some more time for just going out to breakfast with a buddy that I've been wanting to go out to breakfast with and yeah. not feeling like it, it's difficult to, to swing that. So thinking about your workload, thinking about your generosity, how's your business helping others? Thinking about how you want to lead. There's just a lot. Thinking about your compensation. How much is enough? Cast a vision for that. Do you really want to make $1.3 million take home a year? Why? What are you going to do with that? Do you want to put in the effort and grow the business that does that? Or are you pretty pleased with 200000 or 500000 Think about the vision, workload, generosity, compensation, the stuff that the work that you're going to be doing, the focus of the projects you're going to be with, the company culture, strategic thought, download this worksheet and, and take a first stab at answering these things. You said elf. I've used this term and my mentor has used it with me is, do I want to create a lifestyle business or not? And yeah. a lifestyle business, elf business, I'm guessing they're, they're exactly the same thing. A lot of times in a lot of these companies, if you don't think about what your exit is, what your exit plan is, you need to decide, does the business need to be lucrative enough while I'm working in it and working on it while I own it, that it can take care of my retirement or my next step in my life yeah. that, or are you building a business so that when you are ready to leave, that you can exit it and there's uh, someone out there to buy it. And that's when you get your windfall of cash so that you can take care of your next step. And I imagine that being really clear on this vision is going to help you decide, do you want an elf business? Like what you're talking about, something super lucrative now, or are you building a business that, Hey, maybe you don't make as much because you're constantly reinvesting, but someday yeah. there's going to be a $10 million buyout. Yep. And you're kind of delaying those payouts. Yeah. And so vision helps you with that as, as well. I imagine. Yes. So. There's no one right way of doing it either. Yeah. And the, your vision that if you put your effort into this this year and then six months from now or a year from now, you review this, your vision's going to change. But I think we, we, put, we put it off and we don't really think about it. And it's kind of hard strategic work. And I'm learning more and more. This, this should carry a little bit of weight. Here is a business coach who's helped hundreds of remodelers and companies. I, all I do all day long is work with coach, 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 coach. I am saying we have underappreciated the value of getting clear with what our business vision is. And the more you do that, the easier it gets to see how to, how to get there. Oh, this is great. We could keep talking about this. I am just as passionate about vision as you are. 
like I said, it's absolutely critical when it comes to attracting and hiring the right people, which is what we do at Core Matters. But if people want to learn more, especially if they're in the remodeling space, and they're like, well, this Kyle sounds like he's got his act together. He knows his stuff. Mm. I bet he's got more free stuff I could consume or maybe I could find out if this guy can help me. I know he said he's got yes. too many opportunities coming in right now, but I don't think he meant that he doesn't have time for more. Clients. Oh, there's group based stuff. There's all kinds of good. Yeah. yeah. Courses, so, yeah. so don't take that as he's too busy to talk to you. Cause that is not the case. And, and Kyle is someone with a generous heart. So I know he's there to help and give wherever he can. So Kyle, how do people get a hold of you? How do they learn more about what you're doing? So if you go to remodelersontherise.com, remodelersontherise.com, that's my main business and website. And when you click on there, you're going to see the podcast. You're going to click on there and you can click on the private Facebook group that I have that's free of charge. It's called Remodelers Community. Or if you go to remodelers with an S community.com, it's a thriving, really, really valuable group there. And there's just all kinds of little templates, tools, remodelers vault. Dot com. It's got all kinds of templates and resources that people really appreciate. And then if you go on my website, you'll see that I, I have something called the VIP club. I've got one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got courses, a lot of it around financials, your sales process, marketing, and leadership. I love it. Thank you, Kyle, so much for being a guest. You bet. I love having you on the show. I learn something every time we talk. Thank you so much. All of those links are going to be in the show notes. So if you are listening to this, behind the windshield because you're driving in between jobs. And you're like, I got to remember this. You can go get all that information at our website, talenttacklebox.com. And you can get the show notes to this episode. Kyle, thanks again for being here. You bet. Thanks for having me.